Hey, welcome to Sab Chronicles, aka the COVID Chronicles. We're going to dive deep into the teachings of a few of our CEO action pod groups spanning from 2020 all the way to 2024. This series takes us through the fire of COVID to post COVID. And now, who really gives a care about COVID? If you listen to this series, you're going to gain inside knowledge of strategies of the past and strategies of the future. Hold on to your seats as you're about to get a PhD in business. Buckle up and let's get rolling. Hey, are you looking to scale your business from five figures to six figures or six figures to seven figures? If you are, I have the perfect thing for you. What I want you to do today is I want you to go download a book. This book is going to take you through my three pillar system. It's 100% free. All you have to do is go to growfast.cash. I say again, go to growfast.cash and you're going to be able to download my free international best-selling book, which is called Be Good, Be Brief, Be Gone. You can take that book. It's going to help you scale your business to the next level. Again, go download it. Be good, be brief, be gone. Growfast.cash. I say again, growfast.cash. Enjoy. Rethinking organization. Ask yourself a couple of questions. Now that you are where you are today, okay? Because you would have answered these differently maybe even six months ago, okay? So answer these uh, as you sit today. Number one, who are we? That meaning, who are we as a company? Who are we? Okay. What is our mission and vision? And has it changed? Right? Has that changed? Has it changed from six months ago? Has it changed? Wipe out the whole COVID situation. Does it matter? This plays the same role every year. Has this changed? Who are we? Are we the same company we were 10 years ago? No, right? Not at all. How many times is this more in a lot of businesses? Mission and vision. Well, I'll tell you right now, for a lot of them, they don't morph it. It just, it's just to a lot of people, it's just words on a piece of paper. But this really is what drives your company culturally within your company, okay? So who are you, okay? How do you work? You know, how do we work? Is it the same as it was six months ago, a year ago, two years ago? I hope not. <laughs> I hope you have uh, uh, have not digressed, right? And hope you have, you know, made leaps with how you work from then to now, okay? Next is, uh, you know, how do you grow? Growing in new environments. Okay. This applies to now. Are we not in a new environment? Yes. We're in a very new environment. You know, some people would say, well, God, this has been going on all year. Uh, April, May, June, July, August, five months. That's a new environment, folks. <laughs> it ain't getting any newer than that, right? So uh, something that would last a year, like an economic downfall, 08, 07, 08. That was a new environment. And a lot of people didn't survive that environment for a lot of reasons, not just business-wise. So... How can you continue to grow and scale in this environment? You've got to look at that, you know. Ask these simple questions. Digital adoption, if not, okay? Now, if you're an agency in here and you have not adopted the, you, you know, you're not very digital speaking, um, well, you probably wouldn't be here. 
<laughs> most likely would be bankrupt a long time ago. But those that aren't in that real digital realm all the time, um, and not to pick on anybody, but you look at, um, like I know the assets that the agency's models have in here. You know, Rob, Terry, uh, Matt, Aponte, um, Virgil, uh, all have very, very robust, very robust, you know, digital assets, right? Um, this is where if you don't have the digital assets, you need to start morphing that way, okay? You know, refocus, refocus on that, on digital assets, okay? Why? It's the age we're in, folks. AI, all this stuff is, is huge. People want to be able to, you know, go and do this verification process. It's just where we are today. It's the times we're in right now is, is having to, uh, and I'm not saying I'm that great at it either, but because uh, I could sure have a, a, a better website, a better uh, process, a better this, a better that. We could all have better things, right? But we're also creatures of the process that we've created. And if it works, we try, you try not to fix it, right? But on the same note, we also have to morph with the time that we're in to also gain the further acquisition process. Why? I mean, it's, it's where everybody's at now. I mean, holy crap, my son's four. He knows how to operate my freaking uh, iPhone better than I do. <laughs> what do you mean, Dad? The volume button's over here. <laughs> or whatever, right? You know, he's a master at it. He's four years old. That's it's the, the, what we're growing up in, okay? And then on top of that, we really need to focus on, you know, data and metrics to, to really manage operations. That's, the, you know, the next one is uh, data and metrics for operations. Y'all know how big I am on that. I'm huge on, you know, know thy numbers, man. You got to know your numbers. And you can drive data and metrics off of what's happening op happening operationally in your company right so uh i mean many of you in here have said you know i just got that one thing straightened out now and that has made a huge difference just by being able to have that straightened out not that it was broke there was just no thumb on it right every day when you have your thumb on it every day uh that drives a better metric the next day 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 you know and now you know fully you know what's going on operationally inside your company okay um it's a big deal um okay fulfillment speeds that's another one while I'm thinking about it. Uh, right? Because right now, everybody here is probably in a, a fair amount of coffer mode, right? So you're maybe a little bit less reluctant to, to, to go blow, you know, 30, 40, 50 grand, 100 grand on uh advertising expenses today today right as you should be right now um for sure and but the faster we fulfill the faster we acquire the faster we reinvest right so you know the faster you can do a fulfillment process the better off you can be and 
you know, a fulfillment, a fulfillment process through automation really is, is what you want to look at. Automation's king. It really is. The more you can automate a process, the, the better off you're going to be right now. Okay. Um, you know, click and done, click and done. Look at Amazon, one click order, boom, boom, boom. And they fulfill in two days. I mean, no wonder everybody uses them, right? I mean, they have figured out and it's just gotten better and better and better and better and better because they've used fulfillment speed through automation. Okay. And that's really, really, really important to do that. Okay. Um, lastly, on this topic um, is really comes down to uh, you know keeping your foot on the gas. I'm just gonna I'll continue to say this. Um, over and over and over again. I'll say it every single month. Foot on the gas. Because you know what? I am always, I, I typically, just for me, myself, I typically only do client onboarding first and second quarter. That's it. But we're what? Going into fourth quarter? Guess what? Jason's still in acquisition mode too. Why? Keep my foot on the gas. Just, just like everybody in here should be doing. Because we, there's some predictability, but can we predict everything? No, of course we can. Don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, the first quarter for sure. We can all make assumption, but like they say, assumptions the mother of all evil, right? So. Um, we can all make that assumption, but but I'd rather not make that assumption. And I myself am still got the foot on the gas, you know. And I'm probably going to build out a whole another entire cap this year, a whole new one this year before the end of this year, which I've never done in the past. Never done that. So, but for me, I'm adapting. I am eating this dog food that I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm not just telling you to do something I'm not doing myself. I'm eating that same dog food. So keep, keep your foot on this gas pedal and continue to move forward. All right. So last thing I want to go into before we go into the uh, kind of the group part here, the fun part is <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about leadership because it's important right now. Um, this is the, the, the little keynote piece I did for um, the leadership mastermind for uh, uh, that company I was telling you about. And I really started to think a lot about, you know, Looking to grow your business beyond five figures, six figures, seven figures plus? What I want you to do is go download this book. The title is called Be Good, Be Brief, Be Gone. It will help you grow your business past five, six, and seven figures. Go download the book today, growfast.cash. I say again, growfast.cash and download the book for absolutely free effective leadership through, you know, really, really difficult times. And I've taken, I've taken, you know, uh, soldiers through just absolute shit, right? But that's not the same um, as, because uh, the compliancy level is completely different. So that's a hard example to input into this from the standpoint of, a leadership standpoint from military to say your company and leading that company. The basics are kind of there, right? But you have, uh, you know, Oh, what's the word? It's, it's almost like, uh, 
in the military, you don't have a choice, right? If I work for a company, I have a choice. That's a choice. In the military, it's not a choice. You can hate your leader, but you're stuck with them. Good luck, right? Where here, in, in our world, you have a choice to move on. There isn't that choice, okay? So I thought, you know, what during this time and stage of where we are, how is that so much different, right? Because in uh, the, the recorded training, I talked about three. I talked about purpose, direction, and influence, okay? I've, I've morphed that now. So we have purpose, direction, motivation, influence, and then culture. All right? This is what I came up with that's different. Okay? In how you can successfully, doesn't matter if you've got people working for you or not, this can be self-led leadership. All right? This doesn't have to be, oh, well, I don't have any employees. Great. Use this shit for yourself to keep yourself accountable. Okay? Purpose. Whether you got employees or not, right? Somebody's got to do the job, whether that's you or somebody else. What is the purpose? Purpose drives success or failure. 100%. Okay? If I don't feel like I woke up this morning to not have a sense of purpose, to go, you know what? I promised these folks I was going to release this new courseware today. I woke up with that freaking purpose this morning, ladies and gentlemen, and we made it happen. It wasn't freaking easy um, to make it happen, and, uh, but we did it. Why? I had a purpose, right? To do it. I had the direction to do it, and I gave my team the direction they needed to make it happen 30 minutes before this meeting. <laughs> the last video went into its frame. Um, but they had the direction to do it, right? This is the sequence of events that we need to do to make this happen, right? Um, and, and right to HL, okay? All very planned. <laughs> you know, I made that decision uh, when I posted in the Wolfpack group saying we'll probably have it released by next week, right? In my brain, I already had a plan, uh, a contingency plan that said, no, Jack, you need to have it done by this cap because that's what you said, right? Um, just saying it's done in my, my mind was not enough, okay? So I had to direct, if it's you, right? I had to give people, including myself, direction to make it happen. All right? I'm just using this as an example through this. So motivation, what's the motivation? The motivation for me is what? That creates dollars and cents, right, for me. Creates dollars and cents for you. I mean, let's not be coy about it. It's what it is, right? Um, so that's the motivation. But guess what? That motivation was why me and my team were going at it at 12.30 a.m. last night to get to where we got today to be able to push it through the line. Okay? That was the motivation. Why there's motivation. Okay, influence. Who are influencers to you? Think about how those influencers to you in your life, right, have made an impact on you, and you duplicate that same, uh, that, that same way of thinking or thought process if it needs to on yourself personally or, um, or with people that work for you, okay? Not a mindset guy, not saying mindset stuff. Um, 
it is important, of course, to have a certain mindset going through things, obviously, but we influence others on action, right? You know, you also can't be that do as I say, not as I do leader, right? So it's important that we influence in the right way. And again, all can be self-led leadership too. Why? Who holds you accountable? You run a company and you are the, uh, you're the everything in the company, if that's you. Great, but guess what? You've got a self-lead, okay? You have to put yourself through this. Why? Otherwise, uh, what? You, you've still got to got to get up in the morning and do the things okay and then we have culture and I have the crowbar some of you've been introduced to that <laughs> I call it crowbar moments right that so was me <laughs> I think there's more than just you <laughs> it might be more than me but it was me <laughs> <laughs> crowbar moments I mean when it comes to but that's just not like I mean you got to be willing to give yourself a crowbar right when when uh, it, it, and that's where all this process and all these things come into place and you're either over complicating your uh, you know you've got processes that are broken you're not thinking your way through things Jesus, pull your own crowbar out, you know, but you've got to be, uh, what is it they say about the, the first, uh, uh, the first way to overcome an addiction is what? To realize you have an addiction, right? So the first way to realize you're doing something wrong in your business is, you know, or the, the same, same theory, right? So be able to pull the crowbar out and jar your own head out of your sometimes right um, that's kind of important to be able to do that trust me I've done it plenty myself um, and, and I don't ever exclude my team from ever being able to speak up and say hey boss that's kind of <laughs> that's a little ridiculous I don't think we can do that right but you need to enculture that and then enculture the crowbar I always say there's, you know, uh, I, I am hard, but I'm fair, okay? That's the best way to be. And as a leader, you don't get to start soft and get hard. It doesn't work. You can't be, you know, happy feet one day and then hammer feet the next, okay? You've got to be consistent across the board, it's like uh, an uncle of mine ran a, a four or five hundred million dollar company a year. He just said it quite bluntly. I'm an asshole 24 <laughs> seven. Great. At least you're a consistent asshole. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but you can't do a little bit of both. The signals are, it totally screws up culture, right? In your company. Because people don't know from a leadership standpoint what that, what to expect the next day. Am I going to get freaking psycho boss or, or, or uh, you know, nice brought me a cup of coffee and some donuts boss? Nobody wants to be there. So whatever you are, be that and be it consistent. You know? If, if, if you're the, the, the person that's the, the passive leader, well, then you need to pass that torch off to somebody else. That can be the hammer, which is usually a COO type of uh, um, role in a company. They're usually the hammer. But. So, you know, I, I only brought this up because in the training, I, I only kind of use these these first three and framed them out. And I, I got to really thinking about how culture and how things have changed and, and how 
how leadership drivers are changing constantly and, and, and how do we really expand upon that? This is it. This is the expansion upon that. Okay. To, to really, um, it's not about right or wrong. It's about what works. It's not about something that's right or wrong or how it's executed. It's about how it works and how you integrate it into your company and your leadership teams. Hey, we all want to scale our business. Hey, I have the answer for you today to help you do that. If you're looking to scale from five, six, even seven figures and beyond, what called Be Good, Be Brief, Be Gone. I'm going to give it to you for free. All you have to do is type in growfast.cash. I say again, growfast.cash, and you can download the book for absolutely free. I hope the book helps you this year. Take your business to the next level. Again, go grab the book, growfast.cash. I say again, growfast.cash. I wish you the best and grow, scale, and win. Thank you for tuning in to the SAB Chronicles, otherwise known as the COVID Chronicles. Hey, we hope you took a lot of great little golden nuggets from this episode. Follow us on social media. Follow us everywhere you can follow us for updates on all of our different series of podcasts to include this one right here. We hope to see you back as soon as possible. And remember, always, you should always want to grow, scale, and win. We'll see you on the next episode. There it is. Magnum. Holy moly. Yeah, baby. That's what I've been waiting for. Dear God.